Welcome back to Passionately Catholic. Can we prove 100% that God exists? What do you think? Put it down in the comments below. Can we prove 100% that God exists? I'm going to argue this. I'm going to say no. I'm going to say no. We can't 100% prove that God exists doesn't exist. Now let me share a quick story with you, okay? And we're going to come around a direction that you might not see coming by the time we get to the end of this video. I had a student one year, okay, the senior in high school, who told, basically told me this, like, you know what, Mr. Digman, um, you know, I don't really believe in God, okay? This is at a Catholic high school. I don't really believe in God. And the reason why is because I only believe in things that I can 100% know for sure to be real. And the reason why is because I only believe in things I know 100% for sure absolutely to be real. Okay. And if I don't have, you know, perfect proof and evidence for it, then, then I'm not going to accept that. Okay. Now this, this kind of bothered me a little bit because I knew where he was coming from. Like I'm a total natural skeptic myself. So, you know, I remember mowing the lawn, you know, and thinking about this and I'm like, you know, what, what kind of response do, can I, can I give for this, this objection, this, this concern? And I'm like, well, wait a second, you know, how many things do we know 100% for sure to be true? Okay, so for example, I came back to this, this young man in class and I said, you know, do you think that you're called to the married life? Are you called to that as a vocation? Do you think you'll get married someday? Yeah, probably, okay. Is it important to you that your future spouse actually love you? Or are you okay getting married to somebody who, who doesn't love you? He's like, no, that's really important to me. I wanna marry somebody who, who I love. Okay, great, right? So you're, you're good here. Um, how are you gonna 100% for sure know that she loves you? And he's like, oh, well, she'll be nice to me, and she'll tell me she loves me, you know, she'll be affectionate and affirming, and you know, maybe give me you know, gifts here and there, like whatever it is, okay? She'll be supportive, um, she'll tell me she loves me. And I'm like, well, fine, I get you on that, but are you, will you be 100% for sure, absolutely sure that she actually loves you? No doubt, okay? No possibility of doubt, zero possibility. I'm not saying that you have, don't have good evidence, good, good you know, support for your belief that she loves you, but are you gonna know 100% for sure to be true? Because I mean, even if she's convinced that she loves you, there's a possibility that she could be <laughs> deluding herself. Because we do this, we all know that we do this, we all delude ourselves, okay? And can make ourselves believe certain things that aren't necessarily true for a variety of reasons. Maybe he'll be exceptionally wealthy and she's convinced herself that she loves him uh, even though she doesn't really love him because she's really attracted to the money and the lifestyle and all, the, all of that kind of stuff that comes with it. What do we really know 100% for sure to be true in life? Now, I really enjoy, from a philosophical perspective, taking a look at what Rene Descartes had to say about this question. Because he asked this, he's like, what do we know 100% for sure is real? And his answer to this question was, you know, very popular one, you know, we've, we've heard this, that I think, therefore I am. I think, therefore I am. Okay, what do we know 100% for sure to be real? You know, I'd ask my students this and they're like, oh, the desk, you know, or you know, this person next to me, or you, you know, I know that you're real. Well, maybe not. I could be in a you know, huge figment of your imagination. Maybe we're living within, a, a, we're living in a dream with that you know, is within a dream, you know, something like that, okay? Um, who knows? Maybe this is <clears throat> completely fantastical because our senses can be messed with. It's not that hard to mess with our senses, okay? And some people say, well, this can't possibly be a dream because like when I dream, I know, you know, I wake up, you know, I'm, well, wait, maybe this life is actually a dream and at the end of this life when we die, maybe that's when we wake up from this dream experience that we're in, okay? And they're like, well, well, that's silly because I can just pinch myself and that wakes me up from a dream. And I'm like, well, maybe, maybe like when you're dreaming, you're like in two layers deep, okay? If you've ever seen the movie Inception or the movie The Matrix, okay, these older movies, these deal with this philosophical question of, of what really is real and you know what do you know 100% for sure to be true but like consider this with a dream with a dream are you do you remember the beginning of the dream or are you just kind of in the dream right like when a dream starts when you're just kind of in the dream well what do you remember about the beginning of your life you know I mean you're just kind of in it you know it's entirely philosophically possible that what we're experiencing is like a version of a dream but something bigger okay on, on a level out right like we don't know 100% so that's the issue is we cannot hold up this criteria that I'm only gonna believe in things that are I can 100% prove to be true because you don't even know if the the chair you're sitting on is actually there if it's really real or the room that you're in, if that's really real. But according to Rene Descartes, you know that you are real because you're thinking. And the fact that you're thinking means that you 
must exist, okay? Well, wrestling with this thing in terms of God, I, you know, I'm not just this crazy, passionate Catholic guy saying th this stuff, okay? Even you know, Pope Benedict, for crying out loud, would recognize that we don't have 100% proof. Consider this. He says, you know, just as for the believer who believes in God, they must experience doubt of their faith as a continual temptation, that they, that they always experience this possibility that maybe I'm wrong and that maybe God doesn't exist. Okay, so too, for the unbeliever who rejects the idea of God, the existence of God, faith remains a constant temptation and a threat to their apparently permanently closed existence as well. Okay, it's entirely possible that the atheist could be wrong and they experience that as a threat, just like for the theist, they experience the threat of the possibility that they could be wrong. And a couple of guys who experienced this were, were C.S. Lewis, who went from atheism to belief, okay, and believing in God, certainly experienced times of doubt and you know that as a temptation that maybe God doesn't exist but on the other hand Sigmund Freud who came to unbelief and, and lived out as an atheist toward the end of his life had doubts of that that oh well maybe God is real but he stayed committed to his atheist beliefs see here's the thing okay is that we don't know 100% for sure whether or not God exists, okay? And we've got to be comfortable with that. We've got to learn to get a little bit comfortable with mystery. And the reality is, is we're already more or less comfortable with that, that mystery and that not absoluteness because that's part of our human existence anyway. Just like for the young man, if he gets married someday, you know, if he's like, well, if I don't know it's 100% for sure, real, then I'm just not going to do it. I'm not going to get, I'm not going to date, you know, I'm not going to fall in love. I'm not going to get married, you know, because I can't 100% for sure be, be sure. Okay. That's crazy. You're going to miss out on some of the greatest parts of, of life and what it means to be a human being. Cause those greatest things are tied up in relationships with people. And this includes a relationship with God. That is what Catholicism is all about, is this relationship with God and the eternal life that he has available for us and his plan for our life, okay? Now, some people will also object to God and say, well, you know, I don't really understand the idea of God. Like, I can't wrap my head around this idea of God, and it's just too complex, so I can't believe in something like that. Well, here, here's another truth, is that a God that you can fully wrap your brain around isn't God. Okay, God has to be infinitely beyond us in every way, shape, and form for God to be God. Okay, so you, you can't have as a criteria, well, I don't really fully understand God. Of course you don't. Okay, like an ant isn't going to be able to fully understand English versus French versus Spanish and art and music. Okay, literature, like they're not going to, it's an ant. Okay, it's not going to be able to understand these human things, okay, like cooking food even, right? An ant's not going to get that, you know, and us versus God. God is so much further beyond us than an ant to us, okay, that it's just unimaginable. And yet, God loves us so much that he comes down to our level. He reaches down at our level to share not just truth with us, not just eternal life with us, his very self with us, especially in the person of Jesus Christ. And Jesus perpetuates that, especially through his church, the Catholic Church, and the Eucharist. He continues to pour himself out and give himself to, to us through the sacraments, and especially the Eucharist, Jesus' body, blood, soul, and divinity. If you agree with us, be sure to like the video. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe now so that you don't miss any future Passionately Catholic content. Special thank you goes out to all patrons who make everything we do here at Passionately Catholic possible. May God abundantly bless you and I look forward to being in touch with you again very soon.